Not Medellin, Las Vegas. The chase ended when the suspects crashed. One was killed, the other captured. The officers were fine. Pretty dramatic. That's it for us tonight. We will see you tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. A lot going on. Hope you will tune in then. Good night from Washington. Sean Hannity is next. Sean Hannity. Right. Hey, Sean. Hey, Tucker. It's great to see you in Helsinki. It was great. Home it was safe. fun. Thanks. All right. Welcome to Hannity. All right. What we're going to cover this hour is so, so vitally important because you have just witnessed the single worst 24 hours in the history of your mainstream media. And according to the abusively biased press, well, the sky is literally falling. The world as you know it is now over. And the president that you, the American people, duly elected, is a traitor in the pocket of Vladimir Putin and Russia. Now, if all this hysteria seems patently absurd to you, well, that's because it is. Journalism, as I declared on this program, has been dead and buried since 2007 and 8. And in moments, we are going to show you what are the absolute worst examples you can't even begin to imagine? Plus, we'll point out the left's blatant double standard as we compare and contrast and show you how Obama's weak and feckless foreign policy seriously hurt this country's diplomatic efforts abroad. The president's cleaning up his mess. And we'll discuss how Robert Mueller's political witch hunt is playing a huge role in all of this. And later, we also have brand new developments surrounding the Trump, Trump aiding FBI lovebird struck in page. Now, tonight, despite massive amounts of predictable hysteria coming from those who want this president to fail, rest assured, let not your heart be troubled. America's policy is sound. Our republic is strong. The sun will continue to rise day after day on the greatest country God gave man. Sit tight. Buckle up. We're back in New York for tonight's, well, really important breaking news opening monologue. All right, as we go through tonight's opening monologue, I want you to keep some very important questions in your mind. First, think about this. What is worse, a hostile regime that we know is hostile, run by a bad actor, trying to create chaos in our elections as it has many times in the past, or top officials in the Federal Bureau of Investigation rigging an investigation to advance their favored cam candidate uh, that they should have indicted? Or what about the Democratic Party rigging their own party's primary to favor Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders? What's worse? Or is it worse that the Democratic Party bought and paid for Russian lies, of all things, to propagandize you, the American electorate, the American people, to lie outright to you, the American people, about an opposing candidate, rather than win on the important issues that will impact the lives of the American people? Or is it worse that the Democrats, the DNC, and Hillary Clinton, that they actually bought and paid for what turned out to be Russian lies presented as the bulk of information to secure a FISA warrant on an American citizen associated with an opposition party in a presidential election year so they could spy on that party and a warrant based on Russian paid for lies? Or is it worse the Democratic Party bought and paid for those Russian lies, they were never verified, and yet regurgitated by the self-righteous, sanctimonious, delusional media in this country that exalts itself as something they are not, as they claim to be unbiased and fair, when they're nothing but the cheerleaders and crusaders for all things that only matter to the Democratic Party and liberal causes. And ask yourself, what's the worst thing that happened in Helsinki yesterday, that the president began a conversation with the second largest nuclear power in the world about, let's see, nuclear uh, proliferation, radical Islamic terrorism, innocent people slaughtered daily in Syria, the ongoing civil war, Iranian aggression. Oh, and by the way, where is the DNC server? Where is that server that the FBI didn't look at? Where are those 33,000 deleted emails on yoga, wedding, a funeral? Where are they? Now, the media, you know, they wanted what? They wanted Obama-like promises to Vladimir that he'll show more flexibility from Trump to Putin. And of course, President Trump has long stated that good international relationships with our friends and our geopolitical foes is a very good thing for everybody. Simple truth. Now, this is especially true when nuclear weapons are in play. And unfortunately, prior to yesterday's summit, U.S.-Russia relations, they were incredibly strained. And while President Trump tried to ease these tensions and carve out some kind of working diplomatic channel with Vladimir Putin, well, your mainstream media, they were out for blood. 
even before the president arrived. And if you thought the rhetoric and the vitriol coming from America's abusively biased press was bad, well, tonight it has become so much worse. We have Holocaust comparisons, Pearl Harbor references, calls for revolution in this country, and much more. You don't believe me? We have the tape. If the president did that today because he has some reason to serve that other country rather than our own, then, then a lot that has previously been inexplicable is now explicable. And that's the worst case scenario. It's just as serious to me as the Cuban Missile Crisis in terms of an attack or the 9-11 attack. His performance today will live in infamy as much as the Pearl Harbor attack or Kristallnacht. When do we see almost a shadow government come out and say, we cannot side with the government, whether it's the cabinet or the Senate? I think that's the big question. You stood next to that man and you said it and gave the middle finger to America. That's right. We now have to figure out how to deal with a president of the United States who wittingly or unwittingly has been compromised. What we saw yesterday was collusion, witting or unwitting, in the president's words and attitudes toward Putin. The president looked like a weak, dumpy stooge to a KGB spy. He had a chance to show loyalty to the men and women in uniform of America's military and intel community, and instead he betrayed them. Somebody needs to make it clear to President Trump that his behavior it, in that press conference was un-American, uh, outrageous, ridiculous, stupid. You had a one-word reaction to what you saw yesterday. Treason. Treason, yeah. All right, 9-11, Pearl Harbor. You know, I'm normally kind of immune to the media's daily dose of feigned moral outrage, but this is sick and it's now pathological, really sick. Now, this is not news. These people are not journalists. These are not news channels. What you just saw is nothing but left-wing propaganda, misinformation. It's just that plain, obvious, and simple. And naturally, you have former communist turned CIA director turned MSNBC conspiracy theorist John Brennan also chiming in with more propaganda of his own. Take a look. I think there's a big question, first of all, in terms of those who are on Mr. Trump's national security team, whether they can continue to serve in good conscience an individual who basically betrayed his nation. What Mr. Trump did yesterday was to betray the women and men of the FBI, the CIA, NSA, and others, and to betray the American public. And that's why I use the term that this is nothing short of treasonous, because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy, and it needs to stop. And Mr. Trump needs to understand that there are going to be consequences for him, too. Can't wait to get to all of Brennan's nefarious activities, because it's all going to come out. And meanwhile, Brennan's former deep state partner in crime, James Comey, tweeted out, quote, This was the day an American president stood on foreign soil next to a murderous lying thug and refused to back his own country. Patriots need to stand up and reject the behavior of this president. Uh, Jim, uh, we reject your behavior, your, your behavior, your abuse of power that rightly got you fired. So there you have it. You have two indignant anti-Trump former bureaucrats chastising the president, all while they knew about Russia's attempts to meddle in our elections. By the way, it happened on their watch. They did nothing to sound the alarm, all because they thought their chosen candidate, that's right, Jim helped Hillary, remember, was she, they thought she was going to win. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, let's break down one key issue, and that is Comey, Brennan, and the media, they're losing it, absolutely lost their minds. The topic of Russian-sponsored election hacking, well, today President Trump clarified his remarks from the summit, made it perfectly clear that he trusts our intel agencies, not the ones that worked before, and their reports on Russian election meddling. And by the way, I have the proof. I'll show you in a second. Take a look. I have full faith and support for America's great intelligence agencies, always had. And I have felt very strongly that while Russia's actions had no impact at all on the outcome of the election, let me be totally clear in saying that, and I've said this many times, I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. 
could be other people also. Now, in case the left forgot, what you just saw from President Trump is a position that he has clearly articulated over and over and over and over again. And if your media had any honesty in them, they would remind you, they would do their job, but as usual, will do their job for them. So here's the president having said it this many times and more. Take a look. As far as hacking, I think it was Russia, but I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. And uh, I can say that, you know, when, when we lost 22 million uh, names and everything else that was hacked recently, they didn't make a big deal out of that. That was something that was extraordinary. That was probably China. Uh, we, had, we had much hacking going on. Well, I think it was Russia, and I think it could have been other people in other countries. Uh, could have been a lot of people interfered. I think it was Russia, but I think it was probably other people and or countries. Say it was that, Russia, yeah. and I think it was probably others also. Well, the Russians had no impact on our votes whatsoever. Uh, but certainly there was meddling and probably there was meddling from other countries and maybe other individuals. So your media didn't believe them, but he had said it over and over and over and over and over again. We all know the Russians have been meddling in our elections. We know that Russia is a hostile regime. We all know that Putin is a bad actor. And today, now that Trump is the president, all of a sudden the left seems to care. Now, let's just slow down for a moment and let's discuss this blatant hypocrisy, because in 2008, there was Russian hacking into the McCain campaign and the Obama campaign, but at the time, it garnered very little attention. And in 2012, as President Obama gearing up for his big re-election bid, remember, he was overheard on a hot mic telling then Russian President Medvedev that he'd have more, more flexibility. Don't tell the American people we'll have more flexibility after the election. Sounds like collusion. This is my last election, for you. Yeah, and after my election, I have more flexibility. Now, of course, following that incident, there was no outrage from the left in this country, no hysteria. Virtually no one in the mainstream media accused Obama of being Vladimir Putin's puppet, in that case, puppet. Anyway, months later, during a presidential debate, Barack Obama ridiculed Mitt Romney's warning about the Russia threat. Romney was right. Take a look. Governor Romney, I'm glad that you recognize that al-Qaeda is a threat. Because a few months ago, when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not al-Qaeda, you said Russia. In the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back because, you know, the Cold War's been over for 20 years. No, of course, he thought global warming was the big geopolitical threat. And again, the mainstream media, they barely yawn. Remember in 2014, House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, he sounded the alarm about Russia's malicious intentions to cause chaos around the world and the 2016 elections here in America. Throughout his presidency, Obama warned by our own intel services about Russia meddling. He did nothing. 2016, there's Obama, eight years of weakness, telling Donald Trump to quit whining that a U.S. election no serious person thought it could possibly be rigged in any way. Stop whining. Take a look. There is no serious person out there who would suggest somehow that you could even you could even rig America's elections, in part because they're so decentralized and the numbers of votes involved. There's no evidence that that has happened in the past or that there are instances in which that will happen this time. And so uh, I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. Okay, it did happen in the past, and it did happen in spite of him saying it couldn't happen. And by the way, Obama knew there was Russia meddling, and he did nothing, and he told us it couldn't happen. And then he dropped the ball, and the media, they didn't hold him accountable. And following the election in 2016, President Obama even stated publicly that shaming Putin publicly would not be an effective tactic which now the media thinks was necessary, or you're not a patriot. Take a look. And I should point out, by the way, part of why uh, the Russians have been effective on this is because they don't go around announcing what they're doing. It's not like Putin's going around the world publicly saying, look what we did. Wasn't that clever. He denies it. 
So the idea that somehow public shaming uh, is uh, going to be uh, effective, uh, I think, uh, doesn't read uh, the, the thought process uh, in Russia uh, very well. Of course, she was the anointed one, and the media for eight years kissed his, well, you know. And uh, where was the media hysteria over that? Why now? Why President Trump? Now, of course, the Obama administration's policy was much worse than its rhetoric. Obama did nothing to counter Vladimir Putin's aggression and his actions in Crimea, Ukraine. Obama did nothing when Russia, Russia dropped, literally showed up in Assad and started helping that dictator butcher, what, hundreds of thousands of Syrian men, women, and children. That happened on Obama's watch. He did nothing as Russia worked with Iran to destabilize the entire Middle East. Instead, Obama signed off on that insane, horrific Iranian nuclear deal, sending cargo planes with $150 billion in cash and other currency to the mullahs in Iran, by the way, while they were chanting death to America, death to Israel, burning our flag, the Israeli flag, funding terrorism around the world, and all of this meddling, all this interference was on Obama, Clappers, Brennan, and Comey's watch, not Donald Trump's. He's cleaning up their mess. And according to reports, in order to secure the Iranian deal, Obama even looked the other way as the terrorist group Hezbollah funded their terrorist activities through drug trafficking deals in the U.S. And despite all of this, no outrage from the media in this country. In fact, they were cheering for Obama every single step of the way. But now the media is desperate. They didn't think Trump would win the primary. They didn't think he'd win the general election. They thought collusion would get him and Robert Mueller would nail him, but that's not working. So now their conspiracy theories have gone on steroids and human growth hormone. Meanwhile, in this very important time, we all know that there was Russia collusion in the 2016 presidential election. We know about Putin. We know about Russia. Now, by the way, it surrounds Hillary Clinton in the 2016 campaign, not Donald Trump. Hillary paid a foreign spy, funneled money through a law firm, a foreign spy to put together unverified what turned out to be Russian lies, Russian propaganda about Donald Trump, disseminated that material, now known as the dossier, throughout the federal government, throughout Obama's Justice Department, into the FBI, the U.S. Senate, and even used by the Obama administration to garner FISA warrants on a Trump campaign associate so they can spy on that campaign in the middle of a presidential election. By the way, there's a real story of Russia collusion. That is what the media will not report, the biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in our history. And the press is also refusing to cover the ongoing deep state scandal surrounding, look at this, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. Now, the bias of high-ranking FBI employees, they're at the very center of the 2016 effort to literally clear their chosen candidate, Hillary Clinton, of all charges, all felonies she committed, all obstruction she's guilty of while investigating a Russia witch hunt to take down Donald Trump. During our interview last night, here's what President Trump had to say about the corrupt lovebirds struck in page. Take a look. You have to find out who did Peter Strzok report to, because it was Comey and it was McCabe, but it was also probably Obama. Uh, if you think that Obama didn't know what was going, when you watch, and I said it today with President Putin, when you watch Peter Strzok's performance, the lover of Lisa Page, when you watch that performance, the FBI, I'll tell you, I know so many people in the FBI, these are incredible people, what they have to, what they're going through watching this guy, a total phony. I mean, how about uh, we'll stop it or something to that effect? All right, joining us now, author of the brand new book, it's just out, and it's called Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, the case against the anti-Trump conspiracy, Judge Jeanine Pirro. You know, this is the thing. When you take your time and you actually lay out real information and facts, for example, how many times did Donald Trump say, yeah, Russia was guilty of meddling in our elections? And when he said today, he missed, liar. He's a liar. But he said it so many times, they don't care about the truth. This is now hurting the country with this, this one-sided agenda that the media obviously has that is anti-Trump. You know, uh, Sean, I must tell you, that's one of the reasons that I wrote the book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. These
Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight we just landed from Helsinki back in the nation's capital where it is hot and intense. We're going to have our full extended interview with the president from Helsinki. We're going to show that to you in just a minute. We asked him, of course, about Russia, but there are, believe it or not, many more important and pressing issues on the world stage, not just Russia. And we asked the president about those as well. We'll bring the whole thing to you coming up in just a second. But first, tonight, with remarkable speed and intensity, the media and the foreign policy establishment, both political parties, have come together as one to attack the president for his meeting yesterday with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Anderson Cooper, John McCain, Mitt Romney, they all described the president's remarks about Russia as disgraceful. Former CIA director John Brennan called those remarks treasonous and grounds for impeachment. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer announced that Trump was being blackmailed by a foreign power. Others accused him of being a sleeper agent, a spy. One member of Congress from Tennessee called for a military coup against the presidency. Well, as the rage storm swirled, the president bowed to the inevitable, genuflecting before U.S. intelligence agencies whose judgment must never be questioned, and recited the now obligatory oath of loyalty to the spy bureaucrats now in charge of our country. Watch. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. So just to repeat it, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. And the sentence should have been, and I thought it would be maybe a little bit unclear on the transcript or unclear on the actual video. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. So you can put that in, and I think that probably clarifies things pretty good by itself. So that's the hostage tape. The president buckled to criticism. I don't know what they're saying. That's exactly what happened. He buckled. And that happens. This is politics, after all. What is amazing and unusual and ominous is who made him buckle. The people yelling the loudest about how the Russians are our greatest enemy and Trump is their puppet happen to be the very same people who have been mismanaging our foreign policy for the past two decades. The people who invaded Iraq and wouldn't admit it was a mistake. The people who killed Muammar Gaddafi for no obvious reason and prolonged the horrible Syrian civil war and then threw open the borders of Europe. The ones still defending the pointless Afghan conflict and even now planning brand new disasters around the world in Lebanon, Iran and yes, in Russia. These are the people who've made America weaker and poorer and sadder. The group whose failures got Trump elected in the first place. You would think by this late date they would be discredited completely and unemployable, wearing uniforms and picking up trash by the side of a turnpike somewhere. But no, they're not. They're hosting cable news shows. They're holding high positions of influence at the State Department. They run virtually every nonprofit public policy institution in Washington. They are still, in some sense, in charge of our national conversation. And naturally, they hate the idea of rethinking or correcting any of the countless blunders they have made over the years. And that's one of the main reasons they hate Trump, because he calls them on those blunders. Now, being Trump, he can't always explain precisely what he means to say. Sometimes he gets the details wrong, or he gets sidetracked with some personal vendetta, as if anybody cares about that ridiculous Jim Acosta guy. Nobody does. But on the big questions, Trump is indisputably right. The Cold War is over. The world has changed. It is time to rethink America's alliances and to act in our own interest for once. Russia is not a close friend of the United States. But the question is, why should we consider Russia a mortal enemy? Of course Russia spies on us. So do a lot of countries, some of them far more effectively than Russia. The Russian attempt to meddle in our election was comically amateurish. Badly targeted Facebook ads almost nobody saw. Compare that effort to the deep penetration of American industry and the defense sector by the communist government of China, or compared to the remarkable sway that the Sunni Gulf states have over our political process, or the fact that Latin American countries are changing election outcomes here by forcing demographic change on this country at a rate that American voters consistently say they don't want. Those are all major challenges from foreign powers to our American democracy. They're real. And yet somehow nobody on cable news seems upset about any of it. Why is that? Well, here's one reason. Many in Washington are getting rich from the Chinese and the Saudis. Latin Americans clean their homes and watch their kids. Those countries can't be our enemies, in their view. But nobody here is getting rich from Russia, so therefore Putin must be a mortal foe. 
That's what the neocons are telling us we are required to believe. Does anyone actually believe it? Well, no sober person who's read a newspaper this year could recite that talking point without laughing because it's stupid. So the only option, if you want to force the population to accept something ridiculous, is to make sure they don't think too much about it, that they're quiet, they do what they're told. And if you don't believe it, watch what's happening to Trump right now. Obviously, it's possible, entirely possible, maybe likely that the Russian government broke into the DNC servers before the last election. It certainly sounds like something they might do. But before we act like we know for a fact that that's what happened and go to war with Russia over that, shouldn't we see some actual evidence that it happened? Why not? Like maybe a server or at least a clear explanation of what happened. We haven't seen that. And that's what Trump asked for. How dare he? That's a treasonous thought, we were told. He's a quisling, a traitor to his country. That's what they're saying. And not just a few of them. All of them are saying that in unison. Think for a second about what they are demanding. If you don't automatically accept the imprecise, nonspecific, never fully explained findings of shadowy intelligence agencies with long, documented track records of making serious mistakes, you've somehow betrayed your country. The very people who assured you that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, the ones who said the Shah would never fall in Iran, et cetera, et cetera, those people must be believed without question or else. On television, this group is called the Intelligence Community. That's an Orwellian name if there ever was one. Where exactly is this community we hear so much about? Does it have a zip code, a public library system, a youth football league? How long before Congress starts demanding unthinking obedience to the lawmaker community? It's a community, after all. You must obey it. Dissent is unpatriotic. And if you don't agree, you're working for Vladimir Putin. That's where we're heading, by the way, and fast. In some ways, this whole story is about Donald Trump and what he said and what he does. But on a deeper level, it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. This is about democracy, whether or not voters rule their country. It turns out the very people telling you they are saving our democracy are working overtime to destroy it and scolding you as they do. Yesterday, we asked the president about this, along with many other issues. Tonight, we're running fewer commercials and airing our extended interview with the president. Here's part one of that conversation. Mr. President, thanks for doing this. Thank you. The reaction to your press conference in Washington was swift and intense. Former CIA Director John Brennan described it as treasonous and a potentially impeachable offense. Why the push toward conflict with Russia in Washington, on both sides? Well, I think Brennan's a very bad guy, and if you look at it, a lot of things happened under his watch. I think he's a very bad person. Uh, I also think that when you watch Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, when you watch all of the things that have happened in Com happened Comey, take a look at that, and McCabe, who's got some pretty big problems, I assume. Uh, you look at the deception, the lies, what's gone on in the last fairly long period of time before I won. I mean, long before I won, during the campaign, I guess probably during the uh, Republican, you know, when I was fighting against uh, 17 other Republicans. So this has been going on for a long time, but these are people that, in my opinion, are truly, they're bad people, and they're being exposed for what they are, and it's a shame that it has to happen, but it's really hurt our country. Their view is that the United States is forever in conflict with Russia, which is our chief global adversary, and anyone who doesn't believe that is betraying the United States. Without taking up whether that's true or not, why do you think there is this bipartisan consensus on that in Washington? Well, it's sort of incredible, because you look at World War I and World War II, that was Germany, and in World War II, Russia lost 50 million people and helped us win the war. And I was saying to myself the other day, I said, you know, Russia, really helped us. Now, I'm not pro-Russia, pro-anybody. I just want to have this country be safe. I don't want nuclear weapons, uh, even people thinking about it. You know, Russia and the United States control 90 percent of the nuclear weapons in the world. And getting along with Russia, and not only for that reason, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Are they our chief adversary, would you say? Well, they're a strong military, uh, but their economy is much smaller, as you know, than China. And I don't want to even use the word adversary. We can all work together. We can do great. Everybody can do well, and we can live in peace. But uh, I think it's very, very important, you know, and, and I've watched your show a lot, and I see how you're talking about the, mag really, the magnificent size of China. You look at the size of what they've done in a fairly short period of time. That's because of a lot of bad leadership on behalf of the United States. We allowed that to happen. We allowed them to make hundreds of billions of dollars. 
And right now, as you see, and you probably have noticed, that things are happening. We have to bring it more into line. We have to level the playing field between the United States and China. And we've increased our net worth. We've increased our worth by more than $7 trillion since the election. And we're about twice the size of China, our economy. But China still is a massive economy. They have the second biggest by far. So NATO. NATO was created chiefly to prevent the Russians from invading Western Europe. I, I think you don't believe Western Europe's at risk of being invaded by Russia right now. So what is the purpose of NATO right now? Well, that was the purpose. And uh, right. it's okay. It's fine. But they have to pay. And they weren't paying. And other presidents went and they'd make a speech and then they'd leave and nothing would happen. And, you know, the fact that they didn't pay is not, you know, new. It's not a new fact. This is something that people have known for a long time. Other countries were delinquent. You know, in the real estate business, we use the word delinquent. They didn't pay. They didn't pay for past. So I went there three, four days ago, and I said, folks, you got to pay, because we're not going to pay from 70 to 90, and I think 90 is really the right, you know, depending on the way you define it, 90 percent. We're not going to pay 90 percent of the cost to defend Europe. And on top of that, the European Union kills us on trade. We lost $151 billion last year on trade. They don't take our product. They don't take our farmers' beautiful goods. They don't take our cars. And if they do, the rate of tax is many times what we would charge them. We only charge them 2.5%. Uh, their tax, their tariff is, is very substantially right. higher. I mean, in the case of China,